So four years ago, we moved into our old office, but that space was starting to feel a little bit small. One day I came over this perfect place. Do you know how often do you actually find an office where they say to you that you can do anything you want here? Just let us know and we'll fix it for you. This was uh, the next big leap for views. Moving was not simple. It, it, we have so much stuff. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> and the months came and went and they had barely started. This was an extremely expensive project for us. We, we need to earn money on this place. Also, it blir a little bit than what we set for us. No, none of us have seen anything. Whew. This is going to be interesting. Wow. Wow. This is where yes. offices will be. This is going to change the whole concept of use now. This was the beginning of our new journey as a film production company. And now it was all about moving in, create our dream office, and eventually build the best and most flexible film studio in the center of Oslo. In the beginning we were estimating like maybe we'll spend a month getting everything ready. But that was just impossible. Now this is the second round. It's when you move the office you realize how much stuff you have. <laughs> and we had to move the aquarium, which uh, it's quite a job to move an aquarium. There's a fish stuck in here. Need to get it out. So even though we had professionals to renovate this uh, space, there was still a lot to be done with the interior. Uh, the whole studio was, was pretty much untouched. There was still a lot to do because this is so expensive. We had to, to work uh, to, uh, to get in the money. The first thing we did was to set up some of the machines so we could start editing, have a place to charge batteries so we could go out and film some stuff. So we did a little bit of filming and editing while we were moving. This is what you dreamt of for so long. This is what I've dreamt of for so long, finally. <laughs> now everybody will know where the equipment is. <laughs> Every time. Will it fit? Nice. And it smells so nice here. It's like, it smells like a forest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be good? <laughs> Number is system. Number is system. <laughs> One of the nice things that we got the electricians to do while they were renovating was to to redo the whole network inside of the office. Here, uh, uh, the electrician put brand new cables in, in all uh, the ceilings, and we had uh, 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet for all the PCs for like 10 PCs and customize everything for film production, which is actually a dream scenario for a company like us. So, super lucky, super happy. <laughs> I measured it so they're like perfectly symmetrical <laughs> and like uh, in the middle. That's one of the cool things about like starting from scratch. You can just make everything perfect. Yeah. So when we were taking this big leap into this new office, um, we didn't want to just move our crappy old furniture over and make it look halfway. So Anders was the responsible for the interior of uh, the whole place except the studio. Um, so I gave him a budget of uh, 5,000 euros uh, and see what he can do with it. 
Okay, so this office is, a, is quite huge, so we need some more furniture. So I went into uh, like a second-hand web page, it's called Finn in Norway. So instead of buying new stuff, I thought let's buy used stuff. It's, it's uh, better for the environment, it's cheaper, it's more um, interesting, uh, just the furniture has more soul in my eyes. We're gonna go to the 8th floor to pick up the sofa. Of course, the negative thing about buying secondhand is that you have to go to a lot of different places to pick it up. Luckily, we had a van, so we could use the van to pick up stuff. But yeah, it used, it used some time. <sighs> okay, so we're supposed to like, get a mirror, but we have no idea where it is. Mm. Maybe it's here? It could be anywhere. This feels so wrong. <laughs> Yeah, we just went around like all the wrong places because it was like, yeah, it was over there. We have stuff like uh, this old couch, which I think is going to fit really well with the rest of the style here. Bar chairs, chairs for our uh, bar table. Nice. One down, five to go or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of different furniture to make it uh, interesting to be here. So lots of books. Quite right. the fine selection of uh... <laughs> All these books for free. So the budget was 5,000 euros and I think I found all, everything we need for 2,000 euros because of the second-hand web store. So saving a lot of money. And also, it's better for planet, of course. Morten, what do you think about the couch? Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Like kind of a surprise for the the rest of the gang. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so there's a page called like vintage products where they restore old products and uh, make them come to life again. Okay, one, two, three. Ooh. Okay, I'm excited to show the others. Oi! So <laughs> cool. Den er Den er rad, like this. Uh, yeah. Wow! <laughs> so jævlig fett, uh, så fett stativ her, vår. Det synes jeg dere bør bytte, bytte med flotte stativene. Men, uh, <laughs> ja, ja. <laughs> den er mm. Skal den stå ja, her inne, eller? Nei, den, vi må jo ta den med ut på... <laughs> jeg må ta den med ut på... <laughs> As I said, one, one thing the thing about buying used is that, of course, you, you have to travel a lot around. Uh, another thing is that you don't get, often don't get a manual. So you have, you have to just figure out yourself how you assemble the whole the thing. Whoa. Especially the shelves for our office space was a bit of a hassle. It was a lot harder to put up the shelves than they expected. So <laughs> we've been using the whole day just to get to this point. <laughs> oh. Did it work? Oh. It was really difficult to balance, you know, working on project and also having time for finishing the space. Um, doing everything ourselves. You know, it, yeah. <laughs> so still throughout this whole process, we were working on projects and trying to juggle everything and trying to fix a little bit in the office and then editing a video and then going on a shoot and then building a bit on the studio. It was, it was a, a pretty hectic period. It's been just a couple of days. We have someone who needs the studio. We haven't had time yet to put up the sound panels and the lamps and stuff, so we're just now improvising. Uh, we had some Molton, uh, to, to, which we used, and some, some uh, carpets, 
to avoid too much reverb. Yeah, we improvised a little studio setting and actually it was good enough for, for the client. It's nice to have an office with so many different furniture and use the furniture for recordings. There's someone who called us, can you shoot something for us? Maybe we can do it in the meeting room. So yeah, we just improvised a bit, but it, it worked. We, ha we had a lot of space. It's been one week and we're still not finished with the show. Yeah, it was a bit hard to focus those weeks because, you know, there's there's so many things that need to be done that you don't even know what to do. Shit, it's gigantic hard here. You know, since we did all of this ourselves and, you know, we bought all this old furniture to save money and it kind of felt like we were moving in all together, like a student apartment almost. <laughs> Well, you might wonder how we were able to survive as a company using so much time on the renovation. Well, fortunately we got some really cool jobs in, in that period. Uh, for example, we got a job uh, from a peer company in uh, creating uh, videos for the brand new National uh, Museum in Norway. Uh, and this is a big opening, a big museum, so it was a really cool job to get and we were honored to be able to work and, and be some of the per first people to film inside of this museum. And in that series I actually fell in love with my new camera setup. It was a DJI RS2 gimbal with a tilt afloat float western arm and the Sony A1 with autofocus and uh, it was just, I never thought I would fall in love with the Sony camera. We got some sponsors for the YouTube channel, uh, so we made some music videos with that sponsor money. We had a little bit of uh, extra income to be able to cover the, the rent for some months. Oh, and the DJI RS3 Pro. We shot some videos with that shooting an adventure film. With the Sony A1, it's just a perfect combination. Guys, enough talk. We have to finish uh, the office uh, so we can start building the studio. We have to rent it out so we can get more income. We removed the, uh, the lamps that were already there because they did not look very good and we ordered some new lamps. We, we, uh, Morten and I we were a bit, little bit crazy. Oh, what's, why? I found the tail. Huh? There was the tail oh, in the box. Nice. For the studio part of the office, uh, I wanted to have a room where we could do makeup, where the client could sit down and look at the TV screen and see what happens inside the studio. So we wanted to connect the studio with uh, this uh, this room. Uh, which we call, ended up calling the monkey room. I thought when we first make a makeup room, we should do it properly. So, of course, you need some soft light hitting the person being uh, getting makeup, um, but the light should be around 4,700 Kelvin. So I bought some bulbs, quite cheap actually, like smart bulbs, which had um, uh, white balance adjustments as well. In Norway, I bought it from Klaus Olsson. So we created kind of a curved light situation where we can actually have nice soft light with color temperature 4006 towards the mirror, but also towards the makeup artist standing next to you. And with that, we clear the views for opening. Can we have a fan control? Oh, we have a fan control. No. Yeah. Yeah. And this is how it turned out.
So while Anders were working on the interior in uh, the rest of the space, I was uh, doing the studio. And uh, this was, uh, I think, the coolest part of the whole place. The goal was to make the most flexible and professional studio in the center of Oslo, which means we had to really plan everything from, from scratch. And it's heavy, it weighs like 30 kilos, so... We didn't know how sturdy the, the ceiling would be. I was thinking maybe like in May we should uh, be pretty finished with the studio. That was not happening. This is taking so much time. Wow, this is, a, this is amazing. People from the business, people, earlier clients, new clients are gonna come and we have said it's gonna be the most flexible and professional studio in the center of Oslo. It's just one day until the opening party and it looks like a mess here now. Mari, Hanna? What does this do here? Oh. <laughs> Was it called in English? Mari Hanna? Mari Hanna? Ladybug. Ladybug. Seeing a ladybug may be a sign of good luck and the mystical creature is a messenger as well as a carrier of the best news. Wow. And it bestows blessing upon people who come into contact with its presence. Perfect! Like, why is there a ladybug in our studio? Thank you, ladybug. I'll call, call you Mary. So, did the ladybug give us luck? Well, check out the next episode coming next week.